Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to this new Chess24 show where I, myself, uh, Fiona Stilantoni, will be doing uh, regular interviews with some big names uh, from the chess scene. So for my first interview, I'm very uh, happy to welcome Maxime Vachelagraf from France. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, Maxime, for accepting my invitation and doing this. Uh, hello, Fiona. Hi, so uh, this interview is going to be built up uh, into five parts, a quick intro, a look at the candidates tournament, which everyone is talking about these days, of course, a third part about your chess career, a fourth part about your life outside chess, fifth part about future plans, and then a sixth and final part just about some quick and fun one-worded uh, questions and answers. So uh, just to start nice and easy, Maxime, uh, you you are right now the world number five as of 1st March um, with a rating of 2792. But before we get to that, tell us how and when did you start playing chess? Uh, well, I started uh, uh, at the age of five more or less. Uh, my father somehow understood that I was interested in math and uh, related stuff. So he decided to teach me chess. And well, I, I, I picked up on it and uh, never stopped. Okay, so your father told you the rules of chess and after that, who were your first uh, and maybe some of your most important coaches throughout your career? Hey, yeah, so I joined uh, chess club uh, uh, near, my, near my home in Créteil when I was six. So my first coach there for, for a few years was Eric Birmingham. Mm -hmm. So a feeder master with very experience with children and, and stuff. So he, he taught me a lot. He taught me, you know, <clears throat> to strive, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, really, to really enjoy uh, and make the most of my passion. Mm -hmm. and, and well, I had, of course, a, a few coaches with my career. It's, well, I mean, it would be hard to, to name them all, but uh, I'll name, of course, Nicolas Piridonov, who, mm -hmm. who is really a um, great figure of chess, especially, you know, in France, he, he helped a lot of uh, young players, you know, so his specialty was teaching end games, so he, he definitely helped me in that part. He also taught me the grand club, so uh, that's why I picked it up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, lately I have also been working uh, with Alexander Belyavsky, but uh, uh, so, you know, he helped me at, at a period where also I was not doing so well, mm -hmm. uh, chess-wise, and uh, he helped me reestablish a bit uh, the chess I wanted to play, and uh, things, things went better, but of course there are many of the coaches who helped me throughout my career so far, so, you know, I'll, I'm not going to name them all, but uh, a big thanks to, to all of them. Great. A final question about an introduction. You are part of the infamous 1990 uh, generation, just like world champion uh, Magnus Carlsen and Sergei Karyakin. Do you have any special uh, feelings about being part of that year? Well, I mean, it's clear that, you know, there are a few years like this where, uh, you know, all the players um, really are very strong starting from childhood. So, you know, it's really motivating and it forces us from the very start to be very competitive. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in World Youth Championship, I remember uh, back already all the international masters at 13 or 14, so all, all the masters. Mm -hmm. which, for Sergei and Magnus. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, it definitely helped us. I mean, I can think also of the 83 generation or 87, where there are also a lot of strong masters, but of course, the 1990 uh, probably put it to a you know, different level. Mm -hmm. And besides uh, Magnus and Sergei Karyakin, is there anyone else from uh, youth tournaments that you remember that still that you continue to have a rivalry with today? Well, I mean, 
However, we are, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, because it, I mean, of course, you can say whoever whoever we with Magnus, but uh, well, at the moment it's not yet the case. And uh, but uh, you know, uh, there's of course uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi and uh, Dmitry Andrekin, who are both very established grandmaster above 2700. Uh, there are a few others. But uh, I'm not sure that there is any other 1990s that uh, more than comes to the memory right now, but that's, that already makes it five. Probably there are some others. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't check it. Well, talking of Sergei Karyakin, uh, let's move on to the hot topic of uh, the topic everyone is talking about in the chess world nowadays, and that's of course the candidates tournament. Uh, there is only one 1990 uh, player playing in that, that's Sergei Karyakin. Um, it's uh, of course a pity you are not playing there yourself, but tell us as a spectator, uh, what is your verdict after the first three rounds? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I've seen that, uh, you know, this thing was going uh, to play uh, more or less as I expected, you know, he burnt bridges, and uh, if he had been in good shape, maybe it would have worked well for him, so this was really what I didn't know, whether he would be in good shape or bad shape, so far, so far it seems that it's a battle, but of course, it's only three rounds, so... Maybe you can reverse the situation, but uh, it will definitely not be easy. Mm -hmm. And um, all the other players, more or less, are, are playing solidly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, there's already a lot of players who can win uh, mm -hmm. this time. Talking of the openings, is there anything that surprised you? Of course, everyone has done a lot of preparation leading up to the tournament. Well, it's true that everyone uh, has worked on their openings. Well, I mean, I have to say that Chico playing the Queen's Indian has surprised me a bit, but uh, it's, you know, not, not a bad choice in itself. It's a mm -hmm. very solid opening, but uh, it was a bit unexpected. Of course, Peter playing uh, the Slav was also quite unexpected, but it seems that he has done his homework as well. Mm -hmm. And um, well, so far there was a few Berlin and games, there was actually none at mm -hmm. the time. So that's actually surprising that all players decide to fight the Berlin with anti Berlin approaches. <clears throat> and well, I mean, in itself, you know, it gives a lot of complicated positions, you know, very double edged, mm -hmm. as we can see, but, um, you know, it's very interesting, but, uh, it's an interesting approach, but at the same time, it doesn't give great chances mm -hmm. for an advantage. So we'll see. We'll see what's yeah. all that. We'll it's still a long tournament. Um, still eleven rounds to go. Tell us a slightly cheeky question. Um, as a chess fan, first of all, who would you like to win? And second of all, if you had to bet some money, uh, who would you? Who do you think will win? Well, I mean, uh, first of all, who I would like to see winning? Uh, I think, you know, most of the players would actually, you know, be, you know, uh, I mean, most of them would be a, a good matchup against Magnus, mm -hmm. but possible to market, to market it. And, uh, you know, I have basically no animosity towards uh, any of the players. Uh, I also have a mentor. Somewhere uh, where I actually, I mean, with who I actually enjoy quite a lot of company. So, uh, you know, I really have, I, I can say that I have any odd favorites. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I had to bet some money prior to the tournament, I had a feeling that uh, Levan would do well. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe Fabiano would do also quite well. And uh, I didn't know also about Peter. I didn't know how, how he would, uh, you know, prepare to towards this event because he has playing, played it already a few times, and uh, I was not sure he would be as motivated this time. But uh, it seems that 
28 and 28. Give them some work. Well, talking about Peter, I think uh, our listeners here at Chess24 will be especially <laughs> interested to hear your opinion uh, on him as he's part of the Chess24 family. Uh, what was your impression of Peter's play during the first three rounds? Well, in general, he, he played, uh, played very decently. So, I mean, I like his opening preparation with black, of mm -hmm. course. With white, I didn't like at all what he did, of course, against Leslie, but uh, well, it's not so easy to, to come up with something in the burning. And also, I think, you know, maybe he didn't make the most of uh, his end game against Tikawi. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure he could have had at least uh, put more pressure mm -hmm. on Ikaru, but um, well, at the same time, uh, before that, he found, he found a lot of good moves and so to really make his life difficult. So we'll see how it goes. Of course, it's definitely not a bad start of the tournament, but um, I mean, at some point, if he wants to win it, and I think he wants to win it, uh, well, he'll have to, to maybe take more risks with White. Mm -hmm. A final question about the candidates. Uh, out of the eight players, who do you think is the one that could cause uh, most problems to Magnus in a match? Um, I don't know about Leva, you know, because um, uh, I don't know really how he would, you know, prepare. Some, but he's never been an easy opponent for Magnus. Mm -hmm. I think also Fabiano is not an easy opponent. Uh, Anish, well, Anish would be a really tough matchup also for Magnus. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, uh, like everyone, I'm a bit, you know, unsure that he's going to win enough games in the candidates, but uh, he's still a serious contender, of course. Mm -hmm. And, if, and uh, there's also Sergei, Sergei. I mean, all these players, you know, when they're playing matches also, it's very different and it's really not easy mm -hmm. against a well-prepared opponent to really put serious problems. Um, so I think, you know, basically any any well-prepared opponent could, could be a, a difficult matchup. But, There's but, one player you haven't mentioned, that's Hikaru Nakamura. There's a famously ah. always go a bit of banter going on between Hikaru and Magnus. Uh, Magnus said in an interview recently that he thought Hikaru was simply not strong enough um, to win the candidates. And also Hikaru famously has a very bad score against Magnus. He's never beaten him uh, in a classical game, what do you think would happen if they came to face in a match? Well, I mean, uh, of course, I forgot about Skiru because, uh, I mean, I think he maybe uh, I've played really uh, was a, an even in the first three games, so that's also why I, I was not thinking of him. I mean, he blundered against Sergei, mm -hmm. and yesterday was in big trouble with White, so some are but he definitely can come back. I mean, if anyone can come back yeah. from a start like this, it's him because he, he's a fighter. I know, I know him, and you know, if he gets his chances, he might come back uh, very quickly uh, on the on the standings. Um, in case of a match against Magnus, well, it would all depend also on uh, how he would prepare for the match, uh, if and if he manages to overlook. And all the outdoor, you know, mm -hmm. feelings and uh, the, his previous encounters with Magnus. If he can't, and uh, I mean, so far from you know, from what I from what I know from him, from uh, from the I mean, I don't know him so well, but I think he, he has a hard time also to mm -hmm. forget that he's uh, very emotional and I think you know. It will definitely not be easy for him to adjust if, if he plays a match against Magnus. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. I think enough about the candidates tournament. Uh, let's return to your own chess career and maybe start with your goals. Um, you are now, as I mentioned, rated 2792. Uh, is hitting 2800 a big, would that mean um, something to you or what are your personal goals? Well, I mean, first of all, uh, I've been in the top, top 10 for some time. So, of course, for, for two months, uh, I had a really bad rating sum. So, uh, I really had to, to come back and uh, I managed it. 
so probably you know I can say that I'm an established top ten, but I definitely can say cannot say that I'm established as a top five player. So mm -hmm. that's would you know really number one on my priority list. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, if I can manage to break the twenty eight hundred mark, yeah, it could be great. But you know, it's also just the numbers. Mm -hmm. That's not the most important. Uh, I mean, uh, what I would really like so. This year is like um, to win a, one of the big tournaments because mm -hmm. I've been actually pretty close in London, so but um, you know it would definitely be a great feeling to 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 win one of the tournaments with every other you know great player playing there. So you know, that would that would definitely help, mm -hmm. and uh, of course. Uh, also, we have uh, I have the French team, so we'll be playing in Baku, and uh, I definitely hope that we can perform well there for, for a few years. We've been really doing pretty well, so mm -hmm. I mean, if we can try to, to actually win the gold there, it, it would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the London Chess Classic. Uh, I think everyone will remember uh, the controversy that happened there surrounding um, the tie break uh, that you played first against Anish Giri and then against Magnus Carlsen. Um, uh, is there any news on that topic? Is, has the situation been revolved? And also more generally, um, after London, you were also involved in a playoff match in Gibraltar. So, also more in general, what is your opinion on the best tiebreak system? Well, I mean, of course, we've been work working out I mean, the issues because, of course, uh, uh, you know, the, the tiebreak system, uh, I like the idea of a playoff of the space, but, uh, you know, so it's actually, you know, arrangement for. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the actual regulations were probably not, not ideally written. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, in general, playoffs are fine. I mean, especially for first places. You know, mm -hmm. very logical that, you know, if you want to decide who's the winner of a tournament, uh, mm -hmm. you actually play it out on a, on a chessboard. That sounds unfair to me. And then another question uh, that you also, you talked about your recent, uh, your slump in rating. I did a little bit of research and I saw that in June 2015, so just over half a year ago, uh, well, a bit more than half a year ago now, but uh, you were world number 28 with a rating of uh, 2723. So you've gained uh, 23 spots in the world ranking and almost 70 points. So how do you explain those uh, swings? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, the point is back in February 2015, I was 27, 75, so I first lost 50 points. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, at some point my preparation stopped working. I also was playing maybe a bit too much and uh, really didn't have any time to rest. So, I mean, a bit of all factors, you know, when, when you start, you know, a downward spiral, and I think I you know, didn't actually win a classical game for like 30 games in a row, something like this. That's definitely too much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then somehow, you know, at some point, maybe uh, I also took the right decisions. I, I had a couple of, you know, weeks break mm -hmm. and managed to, you know, refocus, and then uh, another spiral. Uh, and uh, a more fun one was actually started. And uh, yeah, when you start to recover, you know, you. I mean, I knew that it wouldn't take me too long to actually regain a rating over 2750 if I started to, to play reasonably. But of course, to come back to 2790 is a very different story. But uh, I've had a couple of lucky breaks also. And, uh, yeah, I've been playing much better chess and much more stable chess in the last six months. Right. Talking of your chess, I was going to ask you, what do you consider uh, the greatest uh, strengths and weaknesses in your play? Well, my greatest strength uh, is definitely calculation because mm -hmm. uh, I think that, uh, well, I'm definitely one of the three best calculators these days around. Mm -hmm. That's for sure, but 
you know, it can change and you you need, you know, to, to keep your shape uh, mm -hmm. in order for that to work. So, uh, you know, it's pretty useful, but it's not uh, like something that uh, you can count on uh, as a guarantee during the game. So it's not that easy. So as for weaknesses go, well, I've been trying to be a more universal player over the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, for instance, my opening preparations are significantly improved mm -hmm. at some point and are still improving. So we'll see how that goes. Of course, you know, sometimes I've not been able to to put uh, as many problems uh, as I would up against the other guys at the mm -hmm. top. So probably that's still an area that I need to work on. And uh, yeah, sometimes I also take strange decisions, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, basically I don't know what to do in the positions, but that happens to everyone. Yeah. But in general, you know, uh, I've been playing more than, more than fine in mm -hmm. the last one. Well, you were talking about working on your weaknesses, so <coughs> my next question is, uh, how do you train on your chess when you are not at a tournament? Um, people were wondering, do you still read any chess uh, books? And also, do you solve uh, chess puzzles, tactics? As for books goes, you know, I mean, I sometimes do. I mean, I sometimes, you know, find books very enjoyable to read, but uh, it's not uh, like opening books or stuff like this. It's more general knowledge, general culture and books. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, chess related, uh, I'm speaking of, but uh, uh, I mean, it's not really about improving my chess, so it's really just for education and, uh, you know, entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, as for puzzles, of course, I mean, I've always been uh, very fond of solving studies, mm -hmm. so I still do that a few times, I mean, uh, of course, it's not so easy to come up with uh, new studies to solve with the family. Most of the themes uh, I know, uh, I know, uh, I know a few of them, mm -hmm. but uh, I still do. And uh, of course, I solve tactics from time to time, especially you know before tournaments. Mm -hmm. But I mean, clearly ninety percent of my, my work is dedicated to dedicated to, to openings. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the same uh, ratio for, for everyone. Yeah. Exactly. And what about during tournaments? Uh, how long do you generally prepare before each game? Well, I've been uh, improving on that. It means that I'm not spending as much time as I used to, and I actually stay quite fresh during the games. Mm -hmm. Uh, the point is, uh, of course, I uh, mostly only have to, to review lines, and that's, you know, that takes a decent parts uh, out of your morning, but uh, it's not uh, that much if you actually do, do it a few times uh, every day, because every, every other day you, you have to repeat more or less the same openings. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. So I would say uh, two hours maximum in the morning, because otherwise it's uh, just too much. It's a four okay. or five hours game coming up. Okay, that's quite interesting. And then during those five, six hour games, uh, I was wondering, uh, what do you think about during the games? Do you just think about the game all the time or is, uh, is there other stuff on your mind? Uh, there's definitely other stuff on my mind. Uh... I might not be ready to, to share every song <laughs> I ever had during a chess game, but uh, basically I, I could think about more or less anything. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, it, I mean, it happened to me that, you know, I mean, I, I've been thinking at the board for five or ten minutes, mm -hmm. and then I'm thinking, what, what variations did I look at? <laughs> and when the answer is none whatsoever, then I actually have. Uh, you know, punch myself and <laughs> get, get back to work. Very interesting. Uh, I was also wondering, uh, what is your both your best game and your favorite game? I guess they are not necessarily the same. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the problem is with that is that, you know, I mean, 
as for the best game goals, you know, it's already very subjective, of course, because, you know, uh, it depends uh, what you mean by best, you know, it could be the one where, where you solve the most problems successfully, or one where you just really play very clean chess, so <clears throat> I don't like the idea so much. And uh, yeah, as for favorite games, I mean, there are a few that, uh, few of them that I have uh, very fond memories of. And, uh, actually, may maybe a bit too many. So uh, I mean, for now, I'm just going to name out three of them. Mm -hmm. So there's my game against Robert Fontaine in 2007 French Championship, mm -hmm. where I basically sacrificed an exchange, then a queen, then and a promoted to a knight. And uh, to them. And there's also, of course, a famous game against uh, Alexander Morozevich in Vil 2009, mm -hmm. uh, where I survived a pretty dreadful attack uh, with my rook being uh, completely cornered on h7 for like 25 moves or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also been uh, in 2013, uh, again, in uh, the Alephine Memorial against Dean Lewin, where I, I achieved uh, complete domination, which is always uh, a good thing to a good thing to do in a career. Yeah. But um, you know, also, I mean, I might have played uh, a few very clean games lately, but you know. Also, with the level of preparation being so high, it's much more difficult to actually have, you know, something to, to write on about, you know, some mm -hmm. uh, really special moments happening. It's uh, much more difficult these days. What you were talking about fond memories, uh, talking about that, do you have any favorite memory about a tournament or a team event that's not related to a particular game? Well, I mean, of course, I, I've had a lot of fun times, especially with the French team lately, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Bermuda's party, Bermuda parties are fun and so, but, uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, I have, I can pick, uh, you know, really one. Yeah, definitely not. I one is too little. Yeah. Um, what about uh, what is the your favorite tournament uh, format? Is it those closed round robins, or what do you think on these uh, new super opens which are emerging? Uh, Gibraltar opened away now. Qatar Masters followed. Um, what's your opinion on that? Uh, well, of course, you know it's not easy to play on the open tournaments for for all of us. So you know it's not like. Some things that I, I would enjoy doing. I also mm -hmm. like the idea of one open tournaments. Uh, I mean, I really like to mix things up, you know, to have one time a team event, to have another time a, an open. And uh, I've been playing in Qatar, mm -hmm. I've been playing in Gibraltar more than, more than a few times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've always enjoyed the idea. I just don't think that, you know, you, you should need to, to play only on with them. And when robins are really fun, and so, uh, of course, I mean, I have to mention also the World Cup, you know, which is a knockout, and mm -hmm. this is really fun, it's exhausting, but, you know, to have one of those every two years is absolutely fine by me. I, I like the idea of one robins, I also hope that, you know, uh, we will see, uh, because there are a lot of them around, I hope that we will see a bit more variety in players. I mean, because, you know, on, only playing, you know, Magnus and Levin and Ishi and so on, you know, I mean, it's fun, but at some point, you know, you also want to see new faces. And, uh, I hope that, you know, this yeah. is going to be a bit, a bit more like that in the next years. Exactly. That was just going to be my next question. In all those tournaments you mentioned, Gibraltar, Qatar, World Cup, uh, lately I've my personal feeling is that we've especially seen a lot of uh, unknown Chinese and Indian players, uh, especially young players. So uh, what is your opinion on uh, up and coming chess nations? And also, uh, do you think, uh, how scary do you think Wei Yi is? 
Well, I mean, for starters, I don't think that we can call China as an emerging nation anymore as they just want, you know, the Olympiads. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the Indians have definitely a pretty good, uh, I mean, a pretty good number of young talents. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, how it goes. I mean, they, they even have a lot of talents under 10 uh, that we've seen playing quite well in French Open. So, so I know a bit about them. And, uh, well, as for emerging, I mean, you know, basically, uh, with the software and the internet, that, I mean, available nowadays, you know, basically any player from any country could become world champion if he just picks up on the right material, is in the right frame of mm-hmm. mind. You, you, you have the teachers available from anywhere in the world, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean. Uh, as for where it goes, of course, I mean, maybe his last few tournaments were not you know, as uh, showing uh, in as strong uh, as he used to appear, but he definitely, you know, uh, once you hit the 2700 mark, you know, the other players start, you know, taking up, taking you seriously. I mean, I, I'm sure they did before, but uh, it's definitely not the same, and you have to adjust to the situation. You uh, basically have a target on your back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, what he's been doing in bike, you know, for the first participation at 16 years old, uh, he's been doing much better than Magnus the uh, first time he played there. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how he adjusts. We'll see how he, he manages uh, to develop his opening preparation, also to to place these guys, but I'm not worried about this future and uh, uh, pretty sure that he might be one of the strongest rivals of Magnus in the next few years. Okay. Talking about the future of chess, um, what is your opinion on what can be done to improve the perception of chess in the public eye? Uh, for example, did you follow or are you aware of the Checkmate TV show that was filmed uh, last October? And do you think things like that or streaming, for example, might improve the, um, the marketing so value? Yeah. Sorry? That was in Malta. In yeah. Malta, exactly. Yeah. Do you think that might improve the saleability and the popularity of chess? And yeah, it is basically welcome because we've not been doing too well in the, I mean, to, to market chess really <clears throat> on TV. Mm-hmm. In Norway, of course, they've been doing it a bit better since Magnus became world champion. Mm-hmm. And maybe even a few years before that, you know, the, the TVs are doing a, a real great effort. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been playing in Norway last year. I know how professional uh, the teams are there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that they managed to, to put up actually quite a good show for, for the audience. Uh, you also need to, to have an audience picking it up on, you know. Mm-hmm. So, of course, it's much easier maybe to market it in Norway nowadays than in uh, other countries. Uh, but, uh, you know, we should definitely make uh, like make an effort. I think that you know, if you you know, if you want to really market it, you probably also need uh, rapid games or like you know, events like the World Big Championship might mm-hmm. might be you know, uh, good starting points. And um, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, there, there's a lot of ideas that that you could have and. Uh, but of course, you know, also you still have to take into account that uh, the internet is probably the best, you know, and uh, the best uh, format for chess right now. And mm-hmm. even if you manage, you know, to, to market it on TV and do a, a decent show, it will not be possible for it to do it for every event. Mm-hmm. Okay, and a final question for this part. Uh, what is your opinion on fr- uh, on why France uh, is so much better as a chess nation now than a few years ago? Well, I mean, uh, in the last few years, uh, uh, we've developed quite a lot, of course, but um, <clears throat> I mean, basically we started, uh, you know, being uh, really good. I mean, we, like, I don't know, 15 years ago, basically, when Etienne uh, got his gem title and got to uh, 2700 level, mm-hmm. 
because uh, at that time we still had joy playing to boys, of mm-hmm. course not anymore, but uh, well, let's just say that I have been his replacement. <laughs> and um, of course we have Laurent, who of course the time still and Mark as well, and we have a lot of other players who, who either have been there and, you know, are, are very close. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I think it's really, you know, we had a good concentration of good players coming up. And uh, I was one of them. But, uh, of course, you know, there, there have been a few things that have been done to, to help us. But, uh, you know, I cannot say that, you know, it's not like... Uh, it's not because of chess in schools that uh, we have such a strong team because not all, none of us learn chess at, at school and uh, we simply had the right teachers, we took the right uh, decisions for our careers uh, at the right time, I would say. I was also, I was wondering uh, how much of the, you mentioned that uh, the French national team has had uh, quite a few successes in the past. You've come even closer to having even big- bigger successes than uh, the ones you had. Uh, how much of that do you think is down to the fantastic team spirit that you have? Uh, well, I mean, a lot because, uh, I mean, we have really, you know, had a great team spirit. I can say for the last Uh, uh, three or four years, uh, I would say. Mm-hmm. You know, everything has been coming up together, and of course, our results uh, have been, you know, improving a lot ever since. And uh, of course, it comes for a lot. You know that you know that you uh, teammates are motivated. Uh, you know, really rooting for you to the very end. You know, so not just thinking about, you know, what to eat for dinner and uh, who, to, who to play to, tomorrow. I mean, as a person, I mean, as a person you know, and, yeah, and compared to as a team. So, of course, I mean, in team events, you know, uh, it's very well that, you know, uh, for a team with four players who hate each other, basically, each other's guts, you know, mm-hmm. will be successful. Yeah. And this leads me to the next part of the interview, which is your life outside chess. So I will start by asking you, uh, the players from your fellow uh, teammates from the French national team, do you also see them outside of tournaments and do you do things together that are not chess related? I'll just come back from a lunch with uh, Laurent and Sébastien, so I guess. Uh, we do things together. I mean, we like very much to play cards together, so we do that a little bit too, too often. Mm-hmm. You do play cards <coughs> even online, right? If my sources are not wrong. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. You do play uh, the French game, Tarot, that maybe people are not too familiar with? Yeah, people are not too familiar with it, but uh, we do that quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, of course, sometimes we actually uh, have some parties together. So, you know, uh, sometimes we, we do a, a few nice things together, but, uh, you know, we really, really just to enjoy ourselves, you mm-hmm. know, to enjoy the good company. Yeah. And in general, uh, tell us, what are your hobbies besides chess? Well, uh, I really enjoy uh, watching sports and uh, doing a bit as well. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things. Um, I'm also a big fan of TV shows. So, I mean, <clears throat> I divorce them when I have time. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, I do a, f- a few other things. Uh, but, you know, I'm not... Uh, It's not like I can say that I have any particular hobbies that I cannot live without. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, one of the things maybe not everyone knows about you is that you actually uh, completed a university degree. So first of all, can you tell us uh, what you studied and where and how long for? Uh, Yes, I mean, after the, the, what we call the back in France, I Mm -hmm. uh, Completing uh, high school, I'm not sure. Yeah, completing high school, basically. 
Uh, I've been studying at the university for three years, so I got a bachelor of degree in mm -hmm. mathematics. So of course it's not like, you know, it's not because I'm a chess player that I must study mathematics and so on. It, it happens to be my case, it's mm -hmm. definitely not the case with some other players. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I mean, as I said, I've always been fond of mathematics, I, I've always enjoyed it. And if I, I mean, if not for my chess career, I would have actually, you know, st studied it much more deeply, I, I think. Do you think there, it has helped you sometimes in your chess, your studies of mathematics? I don't know about help, but, uh, well, I mean, I think it was always nice to, to have this. Uh, uh, until the moment where it was not possible anymore. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, uh, I would make some friends uh, outside of the chess world. That's, you know, that's not always a bad thing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's of course completely different from the chess world than anyway. Uh, where, you know, everything is completely different mm -hmm. from uh, everyday life. and. Uh, it's fun, but you, you also need to, to remember that there are other things besides. Mm -hmm. And do you think that uh, for those three years where you were at, univers at university, do you think that not focusing 100% on chess uh, might have set you back? Or do you think that on the opposite, it might even have been an advantage? Well, I've never been uh, such a hard worker of chess. So it probably didn't set me back too big, I would say. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it helped, I don't think it did, but it probably you know, didn't harm me or didn't hinder my, my improvement. Okay, so now uh, that was about your past. Uh, let's look into your future plans. Uh, tell us, what's next for you? Where are you playing next? So I will be playing in Norway Chess mm -hmm. in, in April. Then, uh, well, I really have a, a lot of tournaments coming up, but... Uh, <clears throat> Not everything is set up. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know uh, uh, when uh, the Grand Chess Tour lineup will be announced, but uh, I will be definitely playing there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's also one part that will be played in France. So, you know, I actually two. I was kilometers. going to ask you about that as well. Yeah, <laughs> it, it will be two kilometers from my my apartment. So, you know, that's quite nice. That's that's. Quite familiar t territory, I would say. The closest you have ever played to home? Yeah, definitely. What did you think when they announced this new stage taking place in Paris? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good thing. I mean, I know I'm so players, of course, and uh, I definitely hope it will be a, a good show and uh, with a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Any other plans besides those? Uh, well, I mean, of course, there's the Olympiads. Uh, there's also probably a few other tournaments. I mean, not everything is set up, as I said, but uh, I, I mean, I'm not I definitely won't be playing as much as uh, uh, last year, where I played definitely too much. I think I played the one 12 or 15, even 15 tournaments. Mm -hmm. That was a bit too much, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely won't be inactive, uh, even if I'm not playing in the candidates. Yeah, you seem a busy man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so to conclude this interview, I'm going to ask you a few uh, questions that you should answer in one word. So, are you ready? Well, ready is a bit too much, but... <laughs> We'll, we'll see how it goes. It's my first try. At, uh, my first try for this too. So, favorite place to play chess in? Paris. Paris. A uh, favorite chess book? Um, Sorcerer's Apprentice. A favorite book, just general book? Harry Potter. Favorite artist or band? I mean, this just goes around and around. So let's say. Uh, no, I cannot give one. <laughs> favorite music genre, then? Uh, rock. Uh, favorite opening? Yeah, I mean, it's Night of a Grenfell, but, uh, you know. If you yeah, had to pick Night one. Of. Okay. Favorite continent? Uh, Europe is good. Favorite world champion? Just world champion? Uh, Fisher. Favorite food? 
so difficult this question yeah? how can you pick only one <laughs> i know uh, uh, life is tough yeah okay japanese food is good favorite tv series yeah, maybe uh working bad yeah of course mm -hmm. a favorite holiday destination in the mountains mm -hmm. a favorite uh, twitter account to follow no really uh, i mean uh, i really wouldn't know that Mm -hmm. A favorite person to follow on Facebook? I don't follow anybody on Facebook. <laughs> A favorite Chess24 commentator? What, Peter? A favorite sport? Um, tennis. A favorite football team? Yeah. <laughs> I anticipated this and there was a question to conclude this interview with uh, from your good friend Fabian Libisevsky. Uh, Maxime, would you rather win the candidates tournament or see Olympic Lyon uh, win the Champions League? Well, I mean, there's one that's actually more realistic than the other right now. It was not the case a few years ago. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, but I probably uh, would still pick uh, me winning the candidates. Of course, there was also a question where, I mean, whether I, if I prefer to be world champion, I think, and win uh, the enemy's jersey, compared uh -huh. <laughs> to not winning and wearing uh, the, the arm jersey, and uh, I definitely cannot wear the enemy's jersey. <laughs> So you would prefer not be world champion? Well, it's just <laughs> impossible to, you know, to imagine that I I would wear uh, the enemy's jerseys. And the, not, the enemy, the enemy is Saint Etienne. Exactly. So we will never see you wearing a Saint Etienne jersey. Is that the conclusion of this interview? Exactly. <laughs> Great. Well, I would like to thank you uh, very much for your time. Yep. And I hope that you people out there uh, will have enjoyed this and I will hopefully be back with another interview very soon. So thank you very much everyone for listening to this and thank you again to Maxime. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and bye.